Hello to Gaki Doc Me. My name's JW Black. I'm a guitar builder that's visiting Japan. I'm happy to be here. Thank you very much. Uh, I started building guitars in the 70s. I was very, very fortunate to meet Dick Boak, uh, who was at Martin Guitars. And he taught me and trained me everything I knew about acoustic guitars back in the early 70s. Fortunately, Roger Sadowski was in the area that I lived in, and Roger came to me and asked if I wanted to apprentice with him also. So I had two master builder style um, teachers very early on in my career. Uh, probably when I was 18, 19 years old, I was able to meet these gentlemen. Uh, I was very fortunate. And I was torn between building acoustics or building electrics. I wasn't certain which way to go. But once I met Roger Sadowski, I was clear that electrics was what I wanted to do. Roger had a passion and understanding for guitars that I just wanted to have that uh, in my life. And I took that experience and started my own shop uh, early on in Kansas City uh, because we had some other businesses there. And we started a vintage guitar shop and I continued to do repairs in some building. Uh, through that time and eventually in the mid 80s Roger Sadowski was kind enough to ask me to come to New York City and help him work on Prince's guitars. Roger got into some projects doing things for Prince and he found as a one-man shop he needed some assistance. Uh, through that experience of working with Roger we decided that we wanted to work together as a team and Roger brought me to New York City in 1986 and uh, through working at Roger's shop in downtown Manhattan. Uh, we worked for the best studio musicians that you could find, but we also worked for musicians from around the country and around the world. Uh, Marcus Miller at the time was one of Roger's biggest clients, but he was also working with Jim Hall and uh, you know, uh, iconic people like that. We were working for the Rolling Stones and people that would uh, press you to do your best. Um, after working with Roger for a while in New York, uh, we decided that New York City was a little too uh, expensive for us to survive in. And I was fortunate enough to meet John Page when he was in New York, and John offered me a position at Fender Custom Shop that had recently started in 1987. I came to Fender Custom Shop in 1989, and my first project was to start doing work for uh, a project they had going on for Lou Reed. So right out the shoot, uh, working at Fender Custom Shop, we were immediately into doing artist relations also. Uh, the nice thing about working at Fender was it was a big picture kind of job. It wasn't just doing one guitar after another. It was working for the best artists like Eric Clapton or Jeff Beck. Uh, we also had the opportunity to work in R&D and development. Uh, we did development for guitars, not only for custom shop, but also for manufacturing. The Richie Sambora was an early model that we worked on exclusively in custom shop, but then we were able to transfer it over to a production guitar in USA manufacturing. Uh, we also worked on instruments that were developed and designed and used in Mexico and also from Fender of Japan. Uh, Hartfield was a project that uh, John and I were involved on. So the work at Fender was very fulfilling, uh, huge opportunities, not only to work for famous artists like the Rolling Stones and Bob Dylan, but to also work you know, with the factory and the company itself. And the nice thing about being at Fender in the 80s and 90s, a lot of people were still uh, available and present that worked there in the late 50s and early 60s. So you got to talk to them about how Leo Fender did what he did and w the choices they made at the time and the transition that went from Leo Fender to CBS and eventually to the Bill Schultz ownership. And I left Fender uh, eventually after 13 years to pursue other activities. And currently I'm making my own guitar under my own name, JW Black Guitars. Um, after I left Fender Guitars, I went back to my first love, which was restoring old pre-69 Fenders. All the instruments that had been damaged and ruined by years and years of people that didn't understand the historical value of them. I went back to working for my favorite vintage dealers around the United States, Norm's Guitars, uh, Vintage Guitar, uh, uh, Lark Street Music in New York, Rudy's Music in New York, working for old friends. But the more I worked on vintage Fenders, I realized after working at Fender making master-built guitars, there was 
an arc between old guitars and new guitars that I didn't feel was completely addressed. Even though people were making sort of a, a relic or a vintage style guitar, I didn't feel they were quite matching what I was hunting for. Uh, in New York, when you worked for a studio musician, as much as he loved his 56 Stratocaster, there were issues that he would have with it, maybe the st style of fret or the radius of the fingerboard, uh, the nut width, uh, sometimes uh, the way the neck was shaped didn't match what a modern player would want. So I started JW Black Guitar specifically in mind to create an instrument that made an arc between what made a great 53 Tele was basically the tone, the character, the magic of the wood and the way it expressed itself but also bring in a lot of modern flavor and blend that a great professional musician could pick it up and play it without going, oh, well, it chokes, uh, the neck is too narrow, um, uh, other issues that would come from old hardware and things that vintage guitars didn't offer the modern guitar player. So my hope is when you play or pick up a JW Black guitar, if there was a 1953 Telecaster on the wall and maybe a Sir or an Anderson or a high-end boutique guitar from uh, today's modern player, that my guitar would fit right in between. It would have the soul and the character of the old Fender, but the playability of the modern boutique guitars. And that's the target of what I'm hunting for in the guitars I build. And that comes from the tone woods, the uh, neck shape, the way the neck is fretted, the size of the fret, uh, the setup is more modern than it would have been traditionally, but the tone wood is more of the vintage tone. And I use a very thin, old-style nitrocellulose finish that you would have only found in the 50s. And I feel it gives it a character and tone that as the guitar ages, with your own particular playing style, you can hear what an old guitar sounded like, but it will still play like a new modern guitar.